continue, continuing our lesson from yesterday, let's simplify this expression, x cubed plus 27 over x squared minus 9, times x squared plus x minus 12 over x squared minus 3x plus 9. We're going to simplify the expression and state the excluded values at the end. Everybody get it written down. I want to ask a question or two here. What's the first step of the process going to be? Simplifying each individual term or factoring each individual uh, numerator and denominator, right? And why are we factoring these things? Because when we're simplifying fractions, we can only cancel common factors, things that are being multiplied. So I have to break these up into multiplied pieces. So I have to break them up into factored expressions. And x cubed plus 27 will factor as what? x plus 3 times x squared minus 3x plus 9. And I'm going to mention it again, and I've mentioned it before. Whenever you have a cubes, whenever you factor cubes, if you've done it in order, that polynomial that remains there, this trinomial, will be unfactorable. It's prime. It's going to have two imaginary solutions, and we're not worried about imaginary numbers here. We're dealing with real numbers only. Okay, so we don't have to worry about factoring that any further. All right, what about x squared minus 9? x plus 3x minus 3. All right, and then the second expression over here, what's the factorization of x squared plus x minus 12? x plus 4x minus 3. And then we just said that this thing is prime, x squared minus 3x plus 9, and that kind of helps us, right? All right, now what can factor? Excuse me, what can simplify here? What can we cancel? The x plus 3s can cancel. All right. x minus 3s can cancel. And this trinomial factor can cancel also. So we're just left with x plus 4 over 1, which is optional, right? You don't have to put the over 1 part. What are the excluded values here? What do we need to exclude? x cannot be plus or minus 3. And again, we stated that because this thing has only imaginary solutions, we're not worried about uh, the excluded zeros that would have come from that. Okay, so our answer is x plus 4 as long as x is not equal to plus or minus 3. Okay, now again, let me remind you one more time why that exclusion is there. If I plug a 3 into my answer here, I'd get 3 plus 4, right, which is equal to 7. But if I plug a 3 into this original problem right there, I get 3 squared minus 9, which gives me a what? A zero in the denominator. So 3 is very bad up here. 3 is bad, okay? 3 doesn't work there, but 3 is good here. And so we need this exclusion here to show that these expressions are only equal as long as x is not plus or minus 3. Okay, so we're qualifying this equal sign right here. Okay, all right, so let's, uh, let's move on. That's multiplication. What is the difference when we're dealing with fractions? What is the difference between multiplication and division? They're, they're very close to each other, right? Keep flip you keep flip change. We keep the first fraction. We flip the second fraction. And what gets changed? Multiplication, multiplication changes to? You mean division? Division, division changes multiplication. It works both ways, right? You can keep flip change a multiplication problem and turn it into a division problem because they are inverse operations of one another. So just to remind yourself, you might write this first problem down as a division problem and then rewrite it as a multiplication problem. Uh, but moving forward, if you have a division problem, write it down as a multiplication problem. Go ahead and do the change. You know, save yourself a little bit of time. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is keep the first one, flip the second one, and change division to multiplication. We'll have that x squared minus 25 or x squared minus 4x minus 5 times x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 6x plus 5. 
because we have a rational expression here, we're going to have to factor everything to see if it can be simplified, right? Because we can only simplify rational expressions by canceling common factors, and we can only find common factors by factoring. So each of these pieces needs to be factored. And these are pretty easy factoring problems, right? Easier than the factoring test problems. What's the factorization of x squared minus 25? x plus 5, x minus 5, right? What's the factorization of x squared minus 4x minus 5? x minus 5, x plus 1. x squared minus 1 is the difference of squares. x squared plus 6, x plus 5 is x plus 6, excuse me, x plus 5 times x plus 1. And now it's cancel fest. Now what can we cancel? We can cancel the x minus 5s here. X plus fives, X plus ones, and we're left with X minus one over X plus one, and we need to qualify this equal sign. When are they equal? When are they not equal to each other? What's the excluded values of X? X cannot equal plus or minus. We also cancel the x plus 1, but because we still have an x plus 1 hanging around, negative 1 ruins everything. Right? So negative 1 doesn't have to be one of our excluded values in this problem, but again, it's okay to put it as an excluded value. Okay, so we don't have to have the negative 1 here. Does everybody see why we don't have to? Because negative 1 is really bad here, it's really bad here, it's bad everywhere. Negative 1 is still bad in our final answer, so we don't have to exclude negative 1 if we don't want to. Okay? <laughs> if we want to. All right? All right. Do we need to do this one? I think we can we could skip this, right? Let's just have a look at it. We would change the division to multiplication, factor everything, and look what happens in this problem. Everything cancels, and we're left with one, right? And so clearly we would need a lot of excluded values in this one because x cannot be what? What would the excluded values be? Plus or minus three. Uh, minus 5 and minus 2. We don't need plus or minus 2. Right. So you see why we would have to exclude those values? Because, and this one, y'all listen, shh, this one is extremely clear, right? This thing, if I put any of these values in there, I get 0 over 0. Is 0 over 0 equal to 1? Right, so this expression up top is only equal to 1 as long as x is not equal to those things. And so that's a really, I'm emphasizing this over and over and over because this is a real sticky point for students usually. And when we get into rational functions, these are rational expressions as soon as we put a y equals in front of this. Um, you know, we say that this is equal to y. And we're talking about what the graph of this looks like. The graph of this is the horizontal line y equals 1, except at plus or minus 3, negative 5, and negative 2. There's a hole in the graph in those spots. Just a hole. It doesn't exist there. Those numbers are not in the domain of the function. Okay? All right. Moving on. Uh, this is your homework from this section, but instead of 17, 7 through 29, we're going to do 15 through 29 odd. All right, for this section. Yes. Do what? We're going to do it in a minute. We, we, got a, we got one more little lesson, mini lesson to cover here. We finish with multiplication and division. What are the other operations we have to do with rational expressions? Addition, Addition and subtraction. Now, if you were given a choice with fractional expressions, would you rather add... Subtract fractions or multiply and divide fractions? Right, because addition and subtraction requires us to get a common denominator, right? 
the common denominators of fractions can be tricky, and even more so when we're dealing with algebraic fractions, fractions that have variables in the denominator. All right, so as we are moving into adding and subtracting fractions, let's look at a few simple ones. Letter A, what would letter A be? Negative 4 over 2x, which would simplify to be negative 2 over x, right? We can take a common factor of 2 out of the numerator and denominator. That's really easy. You want a lot of those questions on the test, but you won't get them. Okay? Uh, you're welcome. Letter B. We would get 3x plus 6 over x minus 4. And you can probably see that nothing's going to simplify here, but how would we make sure that nothing can be simplified? We can factor this as 3 times x plus 2 over x minus 4. And then you can see that uh, there are no common factors here. Now, because we didn't simplify anything, we didn't change the form of this thing, we didn't cancel any factors, there's no excluded values in these problems. We don't have to exclude anything. X can't be 4 here, X can't be 4 here, X can't be 4 here, so this thing is equal across the board. It's okay to state that X can't be 4, but we don't need to to qualify our equal signs because we didn't take away any factors from the denominator. All right, next example. Go ahead and write this one down. 3 over AB plus 6 over BX minus 4 over CX. Now, what is different about this example and the previous two? The denominators are different. The denominators are different, right? And we can't add, subtract fractions unless the denominators are the same. Okay, how can we make the denominators the same? We can multiply, right, denominators. When we multiply the denominators, we have to also multiply the numerator because the only thing we're allowed to do to these three terms, the only thing I'm allowed to do to this and this and this is to multiply them by some form of 1. So whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator also. I could add 0, but that's not going to help me get a common denominator. Right? Remember the identity properties of multiplication and addition. The only thing we're allowed to do to terms is to add 0 or multiply by 1. So what would I have to multiply the first term by to make my denominators the same? What's missing? C. A C and an X, right? CX there and CX there. Right? What about the 6 over BX? What's missing from that denominator? Need an A and a C, DC. Okay, 4 over CX, what's missing? AB, a, negative. <coughs> what? Sorry, Daniel. Teaching across the curriculum. Got to throw a little rock and roll history in here and a little uh, blood typing. All right, so what do we get? Now our common denominator is ABCX, right? Let me see here. ABCX. Try to remember to put those in alphabetical order so it's a little easier for me to grade them, but you don't have to. All right, what about the others? What's the numerator going to be? 3CX plus 6AC minus 4AB. All right? Now, can anything be simplified here? Can we factor anything out of the numerator? Is there a common factor? We can take out all three of those terms. So it's not factorable, which means we can't simplify it. That's it. Not a very satisfying answer, right? 
So if we can make our denominators the same, if our denominators have all the same factors, then we're going to be in good shape. So just like in our previous examples, um, we're going to be factoring all of our denominators always to kind of go. Don't write this one down, but what would the answer to this be? 7 over x minus 3. Does everybody agree with that? Okay. All right. Let's work uh, this one. Do write this one down. We just have a couple more of these. So. x over x squared minus 3x minus 10 minus 5 over x squared minus 3x minus 10. Now, we've been given a gift in this problem. What is the gift? We've been given the gift of a common denominator, right? So we don't have to do any manipulating to make our denominators the same. We're ready to combine these two over the same denominator, so it'll be what? X minus 5 over X squared minus 3X minus 10, right? Are we done? No. Maybe. We have to see, right? We need to factor that denominator and see if anything can cancel. And it will factor as... What? X minus 5 times X plus 2. Sorry about that 2 there. Let me fix that. That's ugly. That's much better. The X minus 5s can now cancel. Noah's correct. And we're left with 1 over X plus 2. Do we need to state any excluded values here? Yes, because we canceled this thing right here, we need to exclude any value that makes that 0 over 0. So that would be x cannot equal what? Positive 5. Okay, because positive 5 right here gives me 1 7th, right? Positive 5 right here gives me 0 over 0. 0 over 0 is not equal to 1 7th, so I have to have this exclusion in there. All right? Any questions? All right, good. Let's make it a little bit more complicated. Or... <laughs> 4 over 3x cubed plus x over 6x cubed plus 3x squared. Now, we've got a problem here. We've got an obstacle. What's our obstacle? Not a common denominator, right? We're adding fractions. We have to have like denominators. So I need to figure out what my common denominator is going to look like. And I'm always going to do that by factoring, right? I'll make sure that every factor is represented in every denominator. So I need to figure out what the factors of the denominator on the right are. What are the factors of 6x cubed plus 3x squared? Three x squared times what, Bryce? Two uh, x plus one. Now I can multiply this thing, multiply these two denominators, and make them uh, the same, right? What's missing in the denominator on the left? On the left, I've got a 3x cubed. What's missing? I need a factor of 2x plus 1. Now, if we're just adding numerical fractions, it's not as important to get the least common denominator, right? When you're doing algebraic fractions, we want the least thing that can make our denominators the same. So what am I going to have to do now in the denominator on the right to make these two denominators the same? What do I need? I need another x, right? Because I need 3x cubed, so I need to multiply x and x. And now we'll simplify this. To add these two things together, we would never leave something in a factored form like that. So 
4 times 2x plus 1 is 8x plus 4. x times x is x squared. And that's going to be over 3x cubed times 2x plus 1. Again, once you factor a denominator, leave it factored. We need to see those factors for other things when we're working with uh, rational functions. Now, the only thing I would do at this point is kind of clean up the top. And what can we do to the top? Yeah, let's move the x squared to the front. x squared plus 8x plus 4. Can that be factored? No factors there, so that's our final answer. And now because we didn't cancel any values that would make a denominator 0, we don't have to have an excluded value. This thing is broken everywhere by x equals 0 and x equals negative 1 half. So I don't, I don't really need to state these exclusions. I need to be aware of them, but I don't need to state them because it breaks everything. Every step of the problem is broken by those two values. Okay? All right, last example. Last one x plus 1 over x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 1 over x squared minus 9. Now that previous problem with the GCF factoring, it tends to give students more trouble than this one does. Step number one is to do what? Factor. We've got to see what factors are in play here. x squared plus 6x plus 9 is x plus 3 times x plus 3. I'm going to write that like this just because I can. It's a little more efficient, right? And then x squared minus 9 is x plus 3 times x minus 3. All right, if I'm going to make my denominators the same, what's missing in the denominator on the left? What do we need? We need an x minus 3, right? There, and I need one here. Now keep in mind that when you add that x minus 3 there, this thing that was in parentheses needs to be in parentheses, right? The fraction bar is just like having parentheses around that x plus 1. So we're going to have to foil that when we... Get ready to do this in a second. All right, now what's missing in the second fraction, the fraction on the right? We need another what? Does everybody see that? We need another factor of x plus 3. And we can add that like this. I can just add a square there and add the x plus 3 there. Everybody make sure you understand what just happened. Okay. Can't let that get by you. Now both my denominators are the same, right? Both my denominators are x plus 3 squared times x minus 3. And if you're not really careful here, you make a mistake that costs you the problem. All right, so we're going to distribute here. That's x. When we distribute that, we'd have negative 3x plus 3 plus 1x, right? And so that's x squared minus 2x minus 3. And what are we going to have from the right side? What are we going to have from over here? It's minus x minus 3. Right, because this is a negative 1 that's being distributed to this parentheses. That's where people miss the problem if you're not careful. When you're subtracting rational expressions, the negative sign gets distributed through the entire numerator. So that'll be minus x minus 3. Now we can clean that numerator up a little bit, and that'll give us x squared minus 3x minus 6 is correct, Noah, over x plus 3 squared times x minus 3. 
can the numerator be factored? Cannot be factored, right? So uh, that's it. Do we need any exclude, exclude anything here? Why do we not need to exclude anything? Because we didn't cancel anything that makes a denominator zero. Right? That's when we have to exclude things. Okay. Let's have a look. Uh, is there one more here? I think, or are we done? I think we may be done. You said we were done. Yeah, yeah we're done. All right, so that's the rest of your homework assignments. Both of those are on page 83. I want you to do 15 through 29 odd. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so that's eight problems. And then uh, this is five more, so 13 of those examples. Be careful with the excluded values. Your textbook is going to give exclude everything that makes the denominator zero. I, I don't really like that at this stage of the game because we're not using... Uh, the excluded values that end up being in our final answer. They're not useful to us yet, and they're a different type of discontinuity. So, uh, but that's what you'll see. You'll notice when you check your answers that there's a little difference there.